Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the out of some DNA results, predicted phenotype, traits and even uh, ethnicity results with my calculator of an Anatolian Neolithic farmer from Barsin. Uh, this individual is male, uh, the ID is I0708 in case you want to know. Uh, this is where he is from, this is the location. As you can see it's close to uh, Istanbul in Turkey. Uh, kind of western, northwestern region of Turkey. And this individual's uh, mitochondrial lineage is N1B. Let's go ahead and check his Y DNA. It looks like his Y DNA is actually J2A, which is kind of uh, not something I, uh, I would expect to see in the Neolithic farmer from Anatolia, but uh, it looks like this individual has got this very West Asian lineage, J2A. Let's go ahead and check his appearance. We're going to start with Nashakot. So with Nashakot, his appearance is as such. He's got light brown eyes. He's got black hair. Uh, in case you want to go over the percentages a little bit, the odds of blue eyes for him is just 0.000%. So definitely no odds of blue eyes. Blue eyes with a neighbor center or green, also really low odds of that. Hazel eyes, half a percent. Not very, not very likely as well. Uh, really, it's either light or brown or dark brown eyes, but light brown eyes beats up, beats out dark brown a little bit by a couple percentage points. Actually, three times uh, more likelihood of light brown than dark brown. However, dark brown eyes is still a possibility for him for sure. When it comes to hair color, uh, with hair color, he's predicted to have black hair. It looks like definitely very, um, very high likelihood of black hair, very low likelihood of anything else. When it comes to skin color prediction, it looks like he's got dark or brown skin or olive skin and definitely not light or fair skin. Kind of a surprising uh, result for somebody who's who's like almost a European, who is the foundation of, uh, you know, the ancestry of many Europeans. Kind of surprising, but it looks like this individual just doesn't have that many light skin alleles in SLC 45A2 and SLC 2045 which do make the biggest contribution to this to this score. And when it comes to hair texture, it looks like his predicted hair texture is that he has wavy or straight hair. Uh, and here is a picture that, um, kind of a web generated picture of an eye color for him. Let's go ahead and close that and check the SNPs that contributed to this result. So as you can see, he does not have blue eye type one. Um, actually, out of all of this, in this entire list, he does not have any alleles for light pigmentation of eyes or hair. It looks like he's very dark color eyes and hair if you take into account his genotype in uh, HERC2 and OCA2. I think if we look at his HERC2 OCA2 eye color estimator, it's going to be very dark brown. And yeah, it is very dark brown. So it looks like it's dark brown eyes at 59%, light brown at 39 and everything else is pretty much non-existent probability. So he's definitely very dark color of eyes and hair. Let's go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores and we're going to save the ethnicity for last. So for polygenic risk scores, it looks like he's got a slightly below average score for schizophrenia, uh, a high score for type 2 diabetes and a slightly above average score for Alzheimer's. When it comes to cancers, it looks like he doesn't have any risk variance for breast cancer, really good. Uh, 8 risk variance for testicular cancer out of 20, also kind of good, like, well, not so much good as just pretty much average result. When it comes to celiac disease section, it looks like 1 risk variant out of 12, once again pretty typical. And 0 risk variance for GSS out of 8, I can't even really pronounce it, it's just uh, German names, it's a really scary syndrome that people get when they're like older. Uh, very good. Looks like a pretty healthy result. Let's go ahead and check the monogenic stuff. It looks like this individual is a warrior in Compt and a warrior in MAOA. So both warrior in Compt and warrior in MAOA. Definitely more warrior than warrior overall. Uh, so pretty much what that means is that this individual has quicker breakdown of dopamine, therefore less dopamine accumulation in the system. Uh, advantages in stress resilience, but disadvantages in memory and attention tasks. That's the connotations that come together with being a warrior. Uh, it looks like this individual has got heterozygous genotype in the, the pro frenetine pro of DRD2, so intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptor sites, and AG genotype in TAC1. So scratch what I said before, definitely not intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptor sites, because he's got the A allele in TAC1. 
uh, he's got a lot less dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and therefore slightly increased likelihood of stuff like alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, all the rest uh, of issues that come together with not having a lot of dopamine due to receptor sites. And this individual also has, it looks like, short form 5-HTTLPR, just like pretty much every human aside from some very small portion of Europeans, which I actually fall into. Uh, when it comes to lactose persistence, he does not have any risk, um, does not, I say I keep saying risk variance, does not have any variance for European lactose persistence. So if you took an Ancestry DNA or 23andMe, they would say you're supposedly lactose intolerant. <coughs> That's how it goes. When it comes to OXTR, the empathy gene, it looks like this individual has got pretty much heterozygous genotype in the main variation, in the main two variations that have to do with uh, empathy. So he's got one sociopath and one um, empath variant, very typical. For diabetes, it looks like this individual does not have type 1 diabetes, really good. Type 2 diabetes score we already saw, it was pretty high. Uh, for hemochromatosis, this individual is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation, but it does not... I uh, mean, he's in the clear because there's still these two others that aren't determined, are not in the file. Um, for Alzheimer's, it looks like no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE. Very good. APOE is by far the biggest contributor to Alzheimer's um, uh, risk scores. And uh, no micro P, really good, really solid. It looks like impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than strength for power athlete. And two fat gene variants in FCOs, RS-1939-609, so uh, slight predisposition to being overweight or obese, higher odds of obesity and even sleep apnea. I wasn't, um, before I did this research, I wasn't aware that sleep apnea comes together with um, fat gene FTO, but there is a correlation there as well. One variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCM 9A, these variants are pretty rare. And when it comes to EDAR, it looks like this individual has got typical European genotype in EDAR, definitely not East Asian EDAR. Um, we're going to scroll past this. No risk variants for familiar Mediterranean fever, but then again, only one, two, three, four, five um, variations were found in the file. So that's zero out of 10 risk alleles. Zero risk alleles out of 10 alleles in total. When it comes to MTHFR, it looks like this individual has got um, pretty typical genotype in MTHFR, uh, slightly higher than average blood pressure. And for cancer section, we don't see any risk, cancer, uh, re risk variance for breast cancer, really good. Um, but we do see actually this genotype, two times reduced risk of testicular cancer, pretty good. But there's also this genotype, three times increased testicular risk cancer for men. So overall, uh, I think it's just about average, just about average in terms of risk score for testicular cancer. Uh, I think it was, let's scroll back and see. For testicular cancer, we're going to check right now. Uh, it was 8 out of 20. So yeah, pretty much just about average. And um, for leukemia panel, let's get back to that. It looks like this individual has got lower odds of leukemia, but there's, then there's this genotype, which greatly increases the odds of leukemia. Very interesting. Um, and one HLA, I can't pronounce this allele, uh, which, which does increase the odds of uh, lupus and celiac disease. And by the way, uh, this is like pretty rare. So having this genotype is kind of rare and it does contribute to a higher risk score for celiac disease. If I had one, I don't really have a score for that. Or do I? Hold on, let me scroll back. I don't even remember what, I, what I've done. I've, I'm just coding so much, I forget what I'm doing sometimes. So yes, there is a celiac disease section. So one risk variant for out of 12, and, it's, and this one risk variant uh, seems to be this one, where he's got one risk allele. All right. Uh, for allergies, it looks like one allele for higher odds of allergies and probably does not have an allergy to peanuts. Really good. All right, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now let's move on to the F. I will remind you that for the ethnic calculator results, I am not going to show you GD match. I am not going to show you uh, G25. You can check that yourself. I'm going to show you my ethnicity calculator. I'm going to show you my stuff, my work. So let's go ahead and copy all this here. For the oracle and go to Wahadu. I'm just gonna open it right here within um within the web page. We're gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna put this here, get rid of the words, they are not a part of the syntax. 
and let's check who this individual is closest to. So it looks like this individual is closest to this corded wear individual, followed by global wear amphora culture, which is um, multiple samples, followed by Bell Beaker Britain, followed by Anatolian Iron Age, followed by this Iranian individual, followed by Ashkenazi Jews. So it's kind of all over the place. Uh, I don't have bars in Neolithic here as a reference, so uh, I might add it in the future after I do more bars in Neolithic samples. Let's go ahead and check single population mode because this doesn't really tell me much. Um, not every sample is exactly as you would expect it to be because corded wear give a karai from my from my from the way I remember it it's a pretty uh, Mediterranean shifted sample. Let's go ahead and check the results. So it looks like um, without reducing anything or adding distance column we get a result that looks like 23% North Italian, 19% Ptolemaic mummy from Egypt, 18% Ukrainian, 14.6% this Iranian individual, 9.3% this Israelite individual, 8.4% this another Egyptian mummy. Interesting, and there and there's even a little bit of African here. 0.8% Shumlak, a little bit of African admixture. Alright, what about if we reduce this to 5? Now it seems to be 50% North Italian, 14.6% Israelite, 13.4% Egyptian Ptolemaic mummy, 12.6% Egyptian pre-Ptolemaic mummy, and 9.4% Ukrainian. So it looks like a mixture of Mediterranean and um, Middle Eastern. What if we reduce that to three populations? Okay, now it's 59% North Italian, 21.4% Egyptian Ptolemaic mummy, and 19% Israelite. Very interesting. Uh, very cool that we could check that. Um, it is definitely makes a lot more sense than just looking at this result because this may be difficult to understand. Uh, now, thanks for watching until the end. If you really want to see what they score with GD match or uh, with G25, the file is in the description of the video. You can download it from the link which is in the description. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.